Are you ready to start achieving your true potential? Are you ready to start living the life of your dreams, accomplishing all the goals and things that you desire in your life? If that's where you're at and that's what you're looking for, today's episode of the Rich Wine Podcast is going to be exactly a great place to start. And today we're going to be diving deep into the profound teachings of Neville Goddard. When I was introduced to Neville approximately two years ago, and I started to dive deep into his teachings, it's completely revolutionized my life and the life of my family. And that's what I really want for you today as well. So let's start off with a quote from him, and then let's dive into the episode. And that quote being, change your conception of yourself, and you will automatically change the world in which you live. So if that sounds like something you're interested in, changing your life from within and achieving the great things that you were looking for out there in your 3D world, this episode's for you. So let's get started. All right. Welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. My name is Randy Wilson, and I'm super grateful that you've decided to join us here today on the podcast. And as I mentioned there in the quick intro, we are going to dive deeper into the works of Neville Goddard. We're actually going to dive into his work, The Power of Awareness. And the concepts that he teaches, which is where I get a lot of the ideas for the Rich Mind podcast, is that the idea is that your outer world, your exterior 3D world comes from the power from within you. So you'll hear me say in the intro of the podcast that you need to work towards winning within. You need to win within in order to win without. And so the idea is that without just means your exterior 3D experience. So let's dive into some of those things. And today I've got five concepts or five things you can do immediately that are going to drastically change the way you look at your world today, things that you can immediately start implementing right away, and you'll see some quick results. These are some of the things that I've done for myself, and I do them continuously uh, day in and day out, and I'm seeing results with them. So I'm excited to share those with you as well. So as you've heard me say many times on the podcast, and if this is the first time you're hearing me speak today, welcome. But if you go back to previous episodes, you'll hear me talk a lot about your awareness, your awareness of what's going on in your mind, your awareness of what's going on in your thoughts. I've told this many times that it's probably the hardest work that I've ever done. It's not a physical labor, but it's a, it's a mental labor. It can be mentally draining, but if you can work towards catching yourself in particular moments, becoming aware of your thoughts, aware of your feelings, you can then begin to grab hold of them, but then also change them. Becoming aware allows you to then control your actions in the current moment, right? And when you do that, you're going to be able to move forward into this desired life that you're looking for out there in your 3D world. Also, the part of the awareness piece is that opportunities are really everywhere. Business opportunities, investment opportunities, relationship opportunities, really, they're all around you all the time. And until you become aware of them, which means you need to get awareness and control of your awareness from within your thoughts and your feelings, you're never going to see them. So two different individuals can be presented with an opportunity. One person is going to see the opportunity as a fantastic opportunity and take advantage of it right away. The other person, based on past beliefs, past thoughts, past ideas, they're going to basically discard it and they're going to move on. And then in the future, they're going to wonder why they didn't get the opportunities or get the results that they were looking for. And it really stems back to that awareness piece. Once you become aware of your beliefs, of your past programming, of your triggers. I talk a lot about triggers on the Rich Mind podcast as well. Once you gain co control and awareness of them, then you can start taking different choices or making different choices. And with those choices, you can then begin different, you can begin getting different results. And obviously the results are what we're looking for in our exterior 3D world, which is super exciting. So one thing I will do is I'm going to warn you that this is going to be an active experience. Most people out there in the world are on autopilot. They're just floating along uh, through their life. A um, uh, mentor of mine, Earl Nightingale. And if you haven't followed Earl Nightingale, he'd be another fantastic resource to tr get yourself on this personal development journey of self-improvement. But he talked about a ship without a rudder. And basically you're just drifting along in the ocean, right? Just imagine an, a, a boat or a ship that has no direction, no guidance system. That's basically what people, most people do out there in the world today is there ships without rudders. They're just literally just being bounced around 
from place to place, thing to thing, believing that they can't improve, believing that their current circumstances is what's keeping them locked in. And what my argument is, and from the workings of Neville Goddard and even Earl Nightingale, is that that is not exactly true. You can change your beliefs. You can change your, the way you think but you need to become aware of those thinkings and of those ideas and beliefs that you've been fed. One of the things, uh, as far as a lack mindset, that's one piece that you can need to become aware of. So when you're in the process of making the decision from a financial standpoint, and the first thought is that you can't do something or you shouldn't do something based on a lack of money or lack of resources, catching yourself in the moment, that's the first step of awareness. And then questioning it. Where did that come from? Why is that there? Where am I struggling in all areas of my life? But this time it's, it's a, a question as far as some money to make a decision, right? To move forward. Where is that coming from? Is that a belief that's been passed down to me from my family? Is it a belief that's been passed down through the school system, through whatever organization that you've been through? Where is that lack mindset coming from? When you begin to question yourself in those moments, that's where the magic will kick in to be able to control them. You'll you'll be able to realize them. I, I've said this in the past in previous episodes as well. It's almost like a, a 3D or an outer body experience. You can almost feel yourself seeing your life in real time. And you're going to be questioning yourself to the point where when you get those questions and then you're going to start getting answers, you'll be able to then be able to make different decisions in those moments. And it's in those moments in those exact moments is when you're going to be able to change the, the direction and the trajectory of your life currently. That's where I, as I mentioned before, that's where the secret sauce, that's where the magic comes in to be able to realize and, and manifest different beautiful things, right? Your dream life that you're actually looking forward to. So another thing inside of the power of awareness that Neville Goddard teaches and promotes uh, heavily is the importance of your imagination. You need to imagine the dream life that you have in the future. You need to feel it. You need to see it. Uh, being calm, being still. We talk about meditation every now and then on the podcast. I've mentioned before, I don't do a, a quiet, just sitting by myself meditation, but I'll have a guided meditation that's kind of helping me bring images into my own imagination, right? into my meditation, into my meditative state. The idea is that you need to get yourself calm. You need to get yourself quiet. You need to be able to see yourself in the places that you desire to be. If health is something that you're looking for, you need to imagine yourself as being healthy. Picture yourself, your future self, as this fit human being, whether you're male, female, old, young, doesn't matter. The point is, is that you're going to vision yourself in the future in this desired state and that imaginative state and then feeling it as if you were in that moment. Those are crucial in the teaching that Neville teaches. And uh, those are the things that I've tried to implement into my life. And I would encourage you to do the same thing. So when you're in the process of doing that imagination, you're in the process of what he calls the law of assumption. So the law of assumption is nothing more than you're assuming the feeling, assuming the sights, the feelings, the sensations of what it's going to be like as if you, the desired result has already come to pass. You need to sit with yourself and be calm and, and quiet the mind and not allow the doubts, the worries, the fears, the triggers to overwhelm you to the point where you can assume the feeling within that you're going to achieve the greatness that you desire. And that's been a big key for me as far as achieving the things that I've desired in my life as well. Okay. So as I mentioned at the very beginning of the episode, I'm going to give you five things you can implement right away. And let's dive into those five things uh, right now. And the first being, Today, we're going to practice visualization. So I mentioned that earlier in the process. You need to practice visualizing yourself in the desired state, in the desired position, in the desired relationship, in the desired uh, form of health. Picture yourself in those moments. Practice the visualization. As I mentioned also, you're going to have your mind is going to be racing. It's going to be very difficult to keep yourself in those uh, visualized imaginative states but when you bring yourself back to those states, uh, just give yourself some grace. Don't beat yourself up over the idea that you can't keep your, your mind under control. It's going to take some work. It's going to take some practice. And that's the idea. You need to practice visualizing. But, but start practicing today. Start that right now as soon as we jump off this episode today. So the second 
part of the process that I'd like for you to start working on implementing right away are affirmations. And what I want to do is kind of break it down into a little bit more of a detailed idea that hopefully you will uh, use. It's been something I've used personally. And I, this is, I just want to describe how I use affirmations. And then obviously you can decide if it's going to be useful for you or not. But affirmations are basically internal thoughts or internal uh, dialogue that you're having with yourself. You need to affirm the positive outcome that you're looking for. Now, one thing Neville talks about a lot within his work is that he talks about your I am statements and I am being the most powerful two words in the English language. You have the ability to proclaim yourself to be anything you desire. So for myself, for example, for my health, I will proclaim to myself that I am healthy. I am fit. I am strong. And I just add many, many different ideas when I say that to myself. I am, I am, I am. And then you finish the sentence, your I am statements. That would be the first recommendation. Now it could be the same thing with wealth. I am wealthy. I am rich. I am abundant. You come up with what phrases and terms mean most for you. But when you're sitting there saying these things to yourself, I want you to, to as the previous and the number, first step was to practice the visualization. I want you to see yourself feeling and being healthy, being wealthy, being this fantastic partner. You need to see yourself in the moment. And when you just proclaim yourself to be with through your I am statements and your affirmations, that's going to be super powerful. Now I do them many times throughout the day. So no one even knows that I'm even doing them for myself. But one thing that I make sure that I do number one or two times that I make sure that I do every single day are right before I fall asleep. And I try to do them as soon as I wake up in the morning. And once again, I'm just saying them to myself. No one even knows that I'm even doing them. So right before I fall asleep, I start repeating to myself, I am health. I am wealthy. And I just start saying to these things to myself and I begin to feel as if I am. I begin to assume that I am those things. Same thing when I wake up, uh, when I become coherent enough to uh, think to myself, uh, I start repeating the same statements, the affirmations to myself. And that would be uh, something I would recommend that you do for yourself as well through your affirmations. Okay, moving on to step three, and you'll notice that these kind of all weave in together. The idea is that I want to make sure that you're getting them separated and understand the importance of each of these steps. So the third step is to assume the feeling. As I mentioned before, when you're going through your affirmations, your I am statements, when you're practicing your visualization, you need to assume the feeling, what you're going to have or what you're going to feel like when you've achieved this desired outcome that you're looking for. You need to feel as if it's already happened. Will it be excitement? Will it be joy? Will it be relief? Will it be happiness? You determine what that feeling is going to be for you, for whatever the outcome that you desire. And when you do that, you're going to assume that feeling right now. You can think about a moment that's going to make you feel that way, or you know what that feeling feels like. And so then you can assume that same feeling today, right now in your, in your present circumstances, when you're doing your visualization, when you're doing your, your I am statement and your affirmations, you're going to assume that feeling that it's already transpired, that's always already happened. And as you do that, you're going to start attracting those things back to you sooner and faster than you can ever imagine. Okay. Step number four is going to be mindfulness meditation. Now we talked about visualizing in the first step. Now, this time we're going to do a mindful meditation. Now, as I mentioned for myself, I do a guided meditation. I use the, there's an app that I, I use. It's called brain tap and I can leave an, uh, a link for the brain tap app in the comments below, but it's a fantastic thing that I just plug in my earbuds. You can turn it up or turn it down based on kind of where you're at in that moment. And there's actually uh, someone speaking to you, helping you kind of visualize the different things that you would want to desire. So it's generic enough where you can add the details that you're looking for, but it's specific enough to get you to visualize things really in a great way. I love that little app. Uh, I take it with me everywhere I go. Obviously it's with on my phone, uh, plug it in my earbuds, where from 10, 15, 20 minutes at a time. And when I get through that mindful meditation, 
it's amazing how great I feel after the fact. Getting yourself quiet, getting yourself in a place where you can visualize the dream life and the future that you desire, nothing, nothing's greater. It's a, it's a great feeling and that's what I wish for you. So let's begin mindful meditation right? So whatever that means to you, if you can do it without a guided meditation, fantastic. But there are many apps out there. And as I mentioned, the one I use called BrainTap, I will make sure I leave a link to it in the comments below. But uh, there are many different ways. And I would recommend for you to figure out what's going to be best for you. Okay. And the last step, that step number five is a gratitude journal. Now I talk about journaling a lot on the podcast. And I will tell you that to picking up the practice of journaling. I don't journal every single day, but I definitely journal as much as I possibly can. It's just a morning routine of mine. I might miss a day or two based on what my schedule is, but I get right back to it. Uh, the point is, is that the practice of a gratitude journal and journaling in general has been fantastic to get my thoughts, to get my ideas, to get some of the beliefs, to get some of the negative beliefs and thoughts and ideas and experiences. I mean, you can talk about uh, the negative experiences you're having with different relationships in your life or even the different influences that you have in your life. The point is, is that when you get your thoughts and your ideas out of your own head and onto paper, you'll be amazed at how you're able to step away from those thoughts and ideas and really question them. You've heard me talk about that so far in this episode. You begin to question those thoughts and those ideas. Gratitude and having a gratitude journal is a great process and a great step for you uh, to be able to start bringing in some of that, those positive things in your life and questioning some of those negative things that are in your life. When you become aware and begin to become grateful for the things that you have in your life, more great things are going to begin to show up. When you're able to discard and forget about the negative things that are in your life, those negative things are going to fall away. You attract what you focus on. And we need to make sure that we're focusing on and become a, becoming aware of the things that we're grateful for. And journaling is a fantastic process. I can't recommend it enough. There's no specific way. I don't have a journal for you to, to download or grab. Just go over to Amazon and type in journal. Or you can even just grab a normal notebook, a pad of paper, and just start getting your thoughts out of your, out of your mind and down on paper. And I promise you, if you can do that, you're going to begin seeing drastic changes in your life. And it's because I, I know that because that's what it's been for me. And I highly recommend you do that for yourself as well. All right, there you have it. Five steps based on the workings of Neville Goddard and the power of awareness. Remember, embracing awareness, according to Neville's philosophy, can lead to a life of abundance, fulfillment, and joy. By becoming conscious of your thoughts and your beliefs, we can rewrite our story and manifest our deepest desires. It all starts with a shift in awareness, a shift that can change everything. And that's exactly what has happened for me. And that's exactly what I would like to happen for you as well. It starts with your awareness. It starts with when you begin to work from within instead of focusing on so much of what's going on in your outside exterior 3D world. So hopefully you found this message valuable. If you wouldn't mind, if you would uh, share it with your family and friends, I would greatly appreciate it. Uh, that's where I'm trying to spread the message of the Rich Mind podcast as far and as wide as I possibly can. If you're watching this on YouTube, if you want to smash that like button and leave a comment, uh, tell me what your thoughts are. Tell me what some of the things you're working towards trying to achieve in your life, how you're using the implementation of the power of awareness into your life and how you're trying to achieve uh, this greater, greater awareness of abundance, uh, life of joy, life of fulfillment, all the things that I know we're out there trying to strive for in our exterior 3D worlds. So go out there. I appreciate your time and attention today. Focus on being great. And uh, I look forward to coming back with more of Neville's teachings. Uh, his teachings has by far been one of the greatest gifts that I've discovered and I look to try to share how I'm experiencing things in my life through the lens of the teachings of Neville moving forward. I, I look forward to coming back with more uh, things that I've learned. Hopefully there'll be things that can help you in this journey of life as we try to achieve greater things. So go out there. As I mentioned, focus on being great. I appreciate your time and attention. I look forward to coming back with the next episode again very soon. Until then, bye now.